Previously on Being Erica. Well, you were raised in a call even now? Well, I got out. Julianne, it is so different from anything that I've ever read. The purple door will be the jewel in the crown of this company. So couples counseling, really? Just keeping on top of things so that we don't wind up divorced. You haven't changed at all. Aren't you at all curious? I've always wondered about breasts. Dave's kind of scary when he's jealous. Gotcha. You think you can make decisions for me for the rest of my life, forever? Is that what I'm doing with Erica? Making her decisions for? Camilla, why don't you tell us about Sadie's wig shop? Uh, before I went back to school, I worked as a wig stylist at Sadie's. Um, her customers were mostly Jewish women, and after marriage, they were required to cover their hair. This is a Jewish rule? Only for the ultra-Orthodox. Anyway, um, my co-worker, Danielle, was borrowing money from the till. She told me she always paid it back. She was just going through some serious challenges. And what kind of challenges? Her boyfriend kicked her out. Um, she had a baby and nowhere to go. I really felt for her. I, I, I knew what it was like to be a single mother. So I um, promised I wouldn't say anything if she promised she would pay it back and stop doing it. But she didn't. No. And you never told the owner? Uh, Sadie went bankrupt a year later. And you felt responsible? Oh, yes. Of course, to a certain extent, I did. You know, so if I could go back, I wouldn't let Danielle do it. I want this off my conscience. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and choose someone that you'd like to accompany you? Really? Yeah, why not? Uh, Erica? Uh, you have some recent experience with a friend going off the rails. And I'm Jewish, so I'll blend. Or I'll try to. All right. Well, then. Off you go. Oh! I am so sorry. Oh, here. Oh. oh. <laughs> it's fine. It's totally uh, fine. Whoa. But I used my credit card the last time I was here. Right, but our system is down today. So for the washing style, I'll need cash, Mrs. Nyberg. I'm, I'm sorry. If it has to be cash, it has to be cash. Great. I'll just pack this up and I'll see you out front. Are you okay to wait here while I am? Um... Fine, don't don't worry about me. You just go and do what you have to do. Your shadle is gorgeous. Beautiful color. My shadle? Oh, my... My shadle. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Ugh, mm. Mine was a mess. I got caught in the rain yesterday. Oh. And I just had my chasana last week. Your... My chasana. My wedding? Oh! <laughs> Mazel tov. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. It's been such a whirlwind. My husband is getting his smicha at Yeshiva Setzchaim under Rav Goldstein. Mmm. That's... Yeah, Impressive. In a very impossible position. Do you realize that? Yes, I am. Yes. I can't help you in any way. I do. That doesn't sound good. I cannot help you do this. I'm sorry. I can't help you anymore. I love. Please, I know. I just need a little bit of. I understand. I just. Uh, Mrs. Nyberg here. It's already. Great. Thank you. Actually, Mrs. Nyberg, uh, you can pay by credit card if you'd like. We fixed our system. It's up and running. Great. Perfect. You almost done? Yes, I am. Thank you, Danielle. Parked up front. Seth? Goodbye. Nice chatting with you. Seth? Are you okay? Who was that guy, the one that just left? Shimon Nyberg, Rivka's husband. Sorry, but I, I need to go and talk to him. Uh, Erica! No, you, you need to send me back. Erica. Open the door. No. Please, come, come and sit down. What, what did I just see, Dr. Tom? Because I, th I think that I just saw Seth Newman. And that shouldn't have happened. Oh my God, that really was him. And we're, we're publishing his autobiography and it's just, it's a huge, crazy lie.
Okay, so is that why you sent me back with Camilla? So that I could, I could find out that Seth, he wasn't in a cult, that he's really an Orthodox Jew? No. No? No. It was a mistake. It was my mistake. I should have checked, and I didn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to send me back. So that you can do what? So that I, can, that I can talk to him, and I can get proof, and then I can tell Julianne so we can stop this. We, need, <laughs> we have spent all of this money, and we are now we're launching a book that isn't real. Oh, my God, I am, I am freaking out here. I, I get it. You're upset, but... And, and Erica, you have every right to be, but you know that you can't use time travel to track Seth down. That's not how this therapy works. So you're just saying that, that there's nothing that I can do and I just need to go out there and forget about this and just publish the book anyway? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Well, then what are you saying? What am I supposed to do? I don't know. What's going on, everybody? Come on in. Welcome to another edition of the show. I'm your boyfriend, George Strombolopoulos. All right, tonight, author Seth Newman. What a story he has. Here's his bio. In 2001, he was one of the faceless members of the Order of God, a cult that controlled every aspect of its members' lives. And while the compound, nestled on the remote shores of Lake Nipissing, was his entire world, Seth knew there was something else out there, something just beyond the purple door. Where is she? By 2002, Seth had escaped from Okay, what's with the disappearing acts? One second you're right behind me, the next is poop, you're gone, you're... I'm sorry about Julian. we, um, we need to talk. No, we need to apologize to Seth. Today is his big day. No worries, it's fine, really. But still, before we send Seth out there, I think that we, we really should just regroup for a second, okay? Regroup? Erica, Seth's the one that should have stage fright, not you. Everybody, say hello to Seth Newman. That's me. Aw. <laughs> star is born. My office is right this way. And you got my contract. I did. So good news or bad news? Oh, no. Unfortunately, I don't really think you have a case. I mean, you may not like the improvements your landlord has made to your offices, but it's within his legal right to do so. I mean, of course, you can always renegotiate when you're able to, and then Godzilla climbed out of Lake Ontario and attacked the CN Tower. Sorry, what did you just say? <laughs> you weren't even listening. Well, yes, I was. Oh. You used to do the exact same thing when I would help you with your math homework. Remember the geometry, geometry set? set? <laughs> yes, I remember. How could I forget having one thrown at my face? Uh, I didn't throw it at your face. Yeah, you did. And I still have the scar to prove it. It's right there. No, it's right here. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. No, it's not really. You should go. So, 
telling me you just ran out there barefoot? Well, I didn't have time to get my shoes on. <laughs> I had one shot at escaping, and I took it. Amazing. Yeah. There he is. Good job, Seth. Yes, yes, yes. You were wonderful. You were. And you, you are just, you're way more dreamy in real oh. life than you are on my flat screen. Uh, thank you. Hi, I'm, I'm George. <laughs> Julianne Giacomelli. I'm the publisher of The Purple Door, and I'm the former publisher of The Secret of Now. And believe it or not, I am single. It's <laughs> <laughs> That's very hard to believe, actually. It's very nice, <laughs> for sure. Um, Hi, we haven't met. Sorry. Oh, this is my partner, Erica. Uh, my business partner, not not my life partner. This is. Okay. Uh, but anyway, listen. Uh, congratulations on the book. I'm gonna buy copies for my whole family. It's gonna be really huge. All right, take care. Okay. Great. Do you think he likes me? David, do you know what sixteen hundred dollars can buy? It can buy an industrial strength dishwasher, or a month's supply of alcohol, a trip for two to New York City to see Billy Elliot, the musical. Now you tell me, what else can $1,600 buy? Hmm? Hmm? If this is about the money, I withdrew. Oh, it's definitely about the money you withdrew behind my back without consulting me. $1,600 also buys you The Incredible Hulk, issue 181. A comic. Book. You don't understand. Wolverine makes his first appearance. Okay, you know what? I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't even want to hear anymore. Bad enough that you spent a fortune on a comic, which worse is you kept it from me. Ooh, someone's got his flannel pajamas in a knot, huh? It's okay. I knew this would happen. Well, yeah. I mean, spending an arm and a leg on a pair of shoes, I get, but a, a comic book. <laughs> I didn't buy a comic book. <gasps> Dave, you're gonna ask Ivan to marry you? <gasps> Shh, secret, okay? <laughs> I got a text saying there's an emergency. There it is. Lock the door. Yes, doctor. So what is it? I only have 23 minutes left of my break. Oh, I see. Well, yeah. Oh, this is my birth. This is my class. 22 minutes left. Right. Call Broom's book, Doctor. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So the leak in the ensuite's all fixed up. Shouldn't be bothering anybody anymore. Thank you. Of course. Closes a door. Somewhere he opens a window. This is to Seth Newman for blowing that purple door wide open. And given all the fab buzz around the purple door, Eric and I have decided. Actually, Julianne. Um... Oh, don't worry, chicken. I'm not going to steal your thunder. You can tell them. Go on. Um, I have decided to to put every last dime we have towards a print edition of The Purple Door. Every last dime. <laughs> wow. I, I, Julianne, Erica, you, you have no idea how incredible this news is. Oh, yeah, we do. Um, I, big congrats. <laughs> come here, come oh. here. <laughs> you really delivered the magic set. Oh. Hey there, Grumpy Bear. 
Don't even start. I'm not in the mood today. Oh, I think you should cut Dave some slack. I should cut up his company bank card. He spends a fortune and then keeps it a secret from me. Oh, and, just... and you don't know anything about keeping secrets, do you? <gasps> it's not the same. Dave is a great guy, Ivan. Go easy on him. Yeah, good luck on your screenplay. Yeah. Seth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I talk to you? Uh, yeah, of course. Just in private. Oh, okay. Please. Is everything all right? No. See. Is this about printing the book? Because you didn't seem all that thrilled. And look, if it's a burden on the company. If it was, would that bother you? Yeah, of course it would. Erica. What's wrong? What have I done? Shimon Nyberg. That's your real name, right? <laughs> Sorry? Your name is Shimon Nyberg, and you weren't in a cult. Your book is a complete fabrication. Uh, OK, look, I, I don't know what's going on with you. I don't know if it's stress or internal problems. No, you know what? Our only internal problem is that you're a big, lying fake. doing what do you think that i'm doing i am looking for proof so that i can show julianne and we can do something about this what that is i don't know yet erica in life when we are faced with unexpected obstacles <laughs> the solution is not to panic but to clearly and calmly examine the options okay then option one we publish a fake memoir and we lose our reputations when the truth comes out Option two, we don't publish it. We still lose our reputations, and we're out all of that money. And before you ask, there isn't an option three. Actually, you know what? There is an option three. Erica. I want to add a regret to my list. I want to go back, and I want to undo signing Seth Newman. I can't let you do that. Why not? Because using information that you have gleaned from a trip to the past to try to fix your life in the present contravenes the rules i don't care about the rules erica no everybody keeps breaking the rules and i'm the one that's paying the price first it's dr fred and kai with her oh hey you might be dead in 10 years and now this 50 50 press it will not survive Seth's lie. you have to let me add this as a regret can't. Maybe Seth has a twin, an identical twin, Shimon, who, who left the cult and became an Orthodox Jew, and that's, that's him. really bad, Erica. Yeah, I know. Okay, we need to call him and Leslie frickin' Clayton in for a meeting. Okay. Do you want me to do it? Yes. Because if I'm going to explode, I'd rather do it in person.
So it's not Wolverine's first appearance, but the guy at Silver Slug said... Silver you probably... Snail? Huh? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, the guy, he said that you'd still like it. So here you go. It's a peace offering. How did you know that I love the Punisher? Uh, because he looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger in The Rock's love child. <laughs> so you're not mad anymore? No. No, I mean, we're only human. We're born to make mistakes, even $1,600 mistakes. Enjoy. Ivan. What? What aren't you telling me? <laughs> Nothing. OK. The last time you acted like this, you were covering for polishing off my cousin Rachel's wedding cake the night before the big day. I was nervous. You know that I eat when I'm nervous. What are you not telling me? I don't even know what you want. So Ivan, what? what did you do? <sighs> OK, I, you know, I sh probably should have told you this before, right after it happened. OK, now you're freaking me out. What, did you cheat on me? Oh, no, no, no. Not really. It, it's totally not a big deal. I kind of got experimental at Pride, and I um, sort of, uh, I touched Julianne's breasts. What? You touched her breasts? How? Experimentally. It, it didn't mean anything. It was just, just curiosity. No. It was just you cheating on me with a woman on a day that we celebrate being gay. What? I... It's pretty hard to deny it now, huh? I'm, uh... I'm, I'm sorry. You're... you're sorry? Let me break down the publishing world for you. You write a bestseller, it garners media attention, which invites scrutiny, which leads to people digging up any skeletons you may have in your closets. Seth, do you even have an explanation? I tried to write about leaving Judaism, and it didn't feel that original or interesting, so... So instead, you lied, and you twisted your religion into a cult. A religion which I share, by the way. Do you have any idea how offensive that is? I... I took some creative license. OK, all the facts are still true. I just embellished a But you knew that we were selling this as your autobiography, a work of nonfiction, which clearly it isn't. Maybe it still can be. No, think about it. Seth, how many people from your old life are you still in contact with? None. I went off the derech, which means I'm an outcast. I, they don't even know my new name. So suppose you still publish it. We all agree this conversation never happened. Or suppose we just sue Seth for every last penny that he has. I don't have any money. We gave you a five-figure advance. I spent it. Seth, what are the chances anyone in your family will read this book? Zero. OK, and what about everyone else? Erica discovered the truth. Then you spin it. Look at a million little pieces. The sales increased after it was discovered to be a fraud. Oprah couldn't even kill it. Leslie, I can't even believe that you're suggesting that there's no Let way to just think about it. Julianne, just, just think about it. OK. My cell phone will be on all afternoon. We should go. Seth failed to deliver what he was contracted to write. So you can go after him for damages, get back your advance. No, Jude, he spent the advance. He's broke. Well, that's a problem. Uh, what if we just, we just published it? Pretended we didn't know. This is something that Seth's agent had suggested. I don't know. It's a risky move. If it gets out that you knowingly published a work of fiction as an autobiography, well, then you'd be facing loss of credibility, potential lawsuits. Just, I, can't, I can't believe that this is happening. If we don't publish this book, we go broke. You guys need to regroup and really think this thing through. I'm sorry. There's no real easy answer here. I just can't believe we're over before we even really got started. 
Is there anything that we're missing? Any other option? Oh, God, Juliana, you know, I, I just, I feel like this is my fault because I'm the one that found the book. And I'm the one who should have known to do a full background check on Seth. I'm the one with experience. Oh, this is such a mess. Hello. Hi. Do I know you? No. But I know you. I know that you've written a book. I know that you're about to go in there and sign a contract. And I know that it's all a big lie. Who are you? A friend. I'm here to help you. Because you are about to unleash a series of events that will hurt you and will destroy Erica and Julianne. What is hateful to thyself, do not do to another. Hillel. Don't do this hateful thing. Shimon Nyberg. I guarantee it will be something that you will regret. So if you could go back, what would you do differently? Well, uh, I wouldn't have gone to the derby that night. Shirley and I never would have fought. She wouldn't have left me for Jenna. I still have my girlfriend, Dr. Nadia. Isn't this when you usually do your old time jumperoo? Hello, Dr. Arthur. No, it's about Tom. Tom? I assume you know why you're here. Yeah. So? Let's talk about it. I'm not sure there's anything to talk about. I know what I did. I know why you're upset. Tom, I'm not sure what you expect us to say. I'm expecting you to tell me to undo it. But I won't. Because I don't regret doing it. I made a mistake, and now I fixed it. Does Erica even know that you've changed her past? Have you told her? No? And you don't think there's anything wrong with that? With altering Erica's past, with abusing your power? Erica had to weather Dr. Fred's mistakes. I'm not gonna force her to endure mine. The universe has a way of writing itself, says Tom Wexler, paraphrased. Well, I think you've made your position quite clear. I don't think there's anything further to discuss. We won't force you to undo what you have uh, set in motion. Dr. Arthur, I so we're done here, then? Guess we are. Well, 
Well, that was a waste of time. I don't think so. Okay, George, we're live in three, two, one. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Come on in. Welcome to the show. I'm your boyfriend, George Strombolopoulos. All right, tonight, George Neeb, author of the new home reno Bible, The Fixer Upper. Okay, you're not supposed to see the bride before a wedding, and you're not supposed to pull out the champagne before a book launch, but I'm feeling pretty confident. He's cocky. I like it. You know what? That's me. You sure look all right? Well, you look like a best-selling author. <laughs> Go on, knock him dead. But first, creep hug. Oh, oh, <laughs> Go on, it's time to fly, baby bird. When we lost the purple door to River Rock, I just thought, that's it for us. Oh. And look at us now. I mean, here we are. Our first author is on national television. I just, I can't believe it. Get used to it, ladies. 50-50 is just getting started. To the future. The future. The future. Uh, this one you're going to love. It is totally up your alley. It's called For Worse by Constance Wren. It's um, a first-hand account of her and her fiancé as they travel from his proposal to her in Labrador to the opposite side of the world for their marriage in Australia. So basically, it's a Canadian version of Committed by Elizabeth Gilbert. Sorry, Les. Refried beans. No me gusto. Uh, well, um, that's everything I have for now, I'm afraid. No worries. We'll find something to work on mm. together someday. Oh, Les, before you go, I'm sure you heard about Brent Kennedy. I mean, he did get fired because of Seth Newman's book, after all. Uh, it, well, it wasn't just because of the purple door. But that was the straw that broke Frank Alvin's back. Hindsight, huh? It's really, it's 2020. I mean, I have to admit, at first it stung when you and Seth went with the higher offer, but oh, really, we should be thanking you. So what's going on with all that, anyway? I'm not actually allowed to talk about it. It's, it's become a legal matter, so. Yeah, I bet it, I bet it has. Would you excuse me? Dr. Nadia, what are you, um, what are you doing here? Is, is Dr. Tom okay? No, Erica, he isn't. Dr. Tom has made a choice that directly affects you without your knowledge. What? I, look, I don't understand. He's altered your history, and I feel duty-bound to tell you. He's altered my history? How? What, I mean, what, what, what does that even mean? It means that everything you're experiencing right now is based on a decision that Tom made for you. Is it true? Is it? Please tell me that you didn't go behind my back and interfere with my life without telling me. I was trying to help you. How? You were going to lose your company. And I'm the one to blame for the way you found out and the box that you were put in as a result. I couldn't ask you to pay the price for my mistake. You felt guilty, so you decided to fix it so that you wouldn't feel that way. No, no. I made a mistake, and I took care of it. This isn't about you. This is my life. You don't understand. Yes, I do understand. You're not listening to me. Yes, I am. Sarah... I'm not your daughter. I know. Dr. Tom, please put my life back the way that it was. Let's, um, let's go back to the office, and I'm going to get us some lattes, and you can get the bank on the phone, and we'll just we'll put our heads together, and we'll sit down, and we'll really figure out what we're going to do next, okay? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. 
seriously, you bench triple your body weight. Well, that explains it. Hey, Dave. Can I get a vanilla latte and a Julianne special, please? Julianne? Uh, she can wait. What's going on? David is teaching me a lesson. Lesson learned. That's incredible. Do they dance? They're in the mood. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Okay, you know what? I think you've proved your point. I don't think I have. How about I go play with Julianne's dueling banjos for an hour? Wait, what? It wasn't an hour. It was like five seconds. Okay, well, then what do you think of this? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Okay, okay. Back off, chesticles. Guys, you know, I'd love a copy, but, you know, I'm... Um... Just gonna give you two some space. You know, this is why I didn't tell you about Julianne, because I knew you wouldn't understand. Oh, I understand. You want to experiment. You feel like you missed out on your bi years? Fine, whatever, just get it out of your system. It is out of my system. Great. It doesn't change the fact that you kept it from me, that you lied. Oh, I'm sorry, and you're totally innocent? You basically stole $1,600 from our bank account to buy some stupid juvenile comic book. There. There's your comic book. I'm so sorry and embarrassed. <laughs> Listen, Samantha, I get it. It's long hours, hard days. You're not the first doctor I've had this conversation with. This isn't how I normally operate, Mark. I know. So just don't do it again, OK? Don't worry, I won't. It was mortifying. I just got called into the chief's office. Has anyone spoken to you? Yeah. Yeah, they have. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And they fired me. What? For, uh, unprofessional conduct. But don't they have to give you a warning? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna go talk to Mark, okay? No, no, you're not. You've got way more to lose here than I do. No, Lennon, this isn't right. You didn't do anything that I didn't do. It's not your fault. <laughs> I've lived through worse. What are you gonna do? I'll find something else. Believe it or not, this wasn't actually my dream job. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I should go. I don't want to have to get escorted out of here. Lennon. I'll call you. Hey, Judith. Hey. Sorry I'm late. No, it's fine. Would you like a coffee? No, I just think we should talk. Sure. Of course. Well, we can't do this. You know that, right? No. I don't, actually. I'm not going to have an affair, OK? That is just ridiculous. It's not me. It's not right. and. I just can't. Look, every day I get up, and I go to work, it's long and it's stressful, and then I go home. And my house is a wreck. My kids, they're running around and they're screaming, and my wife and I were just scrambling with homework and with cleaning and dinner. By the time we're ready for bed. You're just annoyed and you want to be alone. You know what I'm talking about. I don't want to break up my marriage. And I don't want to traumatize my kids. But I'm just not happy. I can't. 
I, I'm, I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ugh, you know it's bad when chocolate doesn't make you feel any better. Hey, Ivan. You wanna you wanna trade this for another latte, Lou? David. David. No. Please turn around. There's something that I have to say to you, and I'd rather not say this to your back. Care Bear, you and I have a no secrets policy. A policy that I broke. So in the spirit of full disclosure. There's something else that I need to tell you. <sighs> David, you are my partner, my ally, and my best friend. And if I've made you doubt my feelings, I am so sorry. And I know that you're upset with me right now, but... <sighs> what are you doing? I love you so much. Will you be my husband? If you're doing this out of guilt. No, 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 this is about us. Will you marry me? Of course I will, Ivan. Okay, what are we gonna do? Well, we need to weigh the pros and cons here. Mm -hmm. We publish the book. It potentially becomes a huge success. It launches our company. We compete with the big players. We're successful. If no one finds out the truth, that's a big if. Or we kill it. We put 50-50 in jeopardy. We lose everything that we've invested. We become the laughing stock of the industry. But we maintain our integrity. Hmm. I'm tough. I'm, I'm a hard ass. I've doled out my share of nervous breakdowns in my career. Hmm. But the one thing I have never done is lie. It's like a point of honor for me. One that is seriously being challenged right now. I know. Okay. If there is no real answer and no real solution, then maybe we need to redefine the question. To what? To what are we willing to lose? Yes. Yes.